Hi, thank you everyone to, for getting into this session. Uh, so glad to be here. API Day is one of the greatest conferences in the space, and I hope it can bring some fun in action today. So let's start. So open banking has become a global phenomenon uh, from the market competition perspective. Uh, and for developer communities, APIs, microservices, containers, and DevOps are already in, right? So last year, a survey by Tink uh, has found that close to half of banks uh, in Europe has failed to meet the deadline for PSD2 to provide that environment or sandbox for any third-party service providers, the PPPs. And in addition to this, the CMA, the uh, Economic Authority, uh, was forced to reprimand five leading banks for dragging their heels over the delivery of open banking functionality within their mobile apps. So what constitutes cloud native is still too, it's way too advanced uh, for most of the institutions and vendors platform. And what is behind the APIs is important. Uh, software ar architecture becomes a very important input to, into continually executing and refining your open banking strategy through, through, through APIs. So, uh, so I'll cover today, I'll talk, talk briefly about the open banking sandbox solution then jump into the landscape of cloud native and common scenarios found for APIs on open banking implementations around the globe before getting into action uh, to showcase the test environments anyone can bootstrap very quickly connecting to, with a cloud native demo application. So my name is Rafael Marins. I'm a Red Hatter and I work for Global Financial Services guiding the technical agenda in the product market team. And so quick cool stories about me. I'm Brazilian and actually I live in Rio de Janeiro. I got engaged with open source in Java community 70 years, 17 years ago. And I'm a Linux, I'm a Linux user since 1996. Uh, more than 20 years background in technical and business space, right? So when I'm not working and with not same, not with my family, I enjoy doing some windsurfing, uh, electronic games, and watching to my favorite football team. Okay, so let's set back uh, last year in, in back in November at the API Days London, we presented another workshop, the Red Hat Open Bank Sandbox. Why we have built it and how we can use it. And it was initially a service provided at Red Hat developers website. By the way, it's a go-to site for every developer to get fast and at speed. So there, there we provided a catalog of APIs. You could register as a user and developer, uh, as a user, as a developer, and get a, a, a user key to place your API call and behind these services, there was a comprehensive technology stack to provide identity access management, a fine tuned authentication, and more than implementing the API gateway pattern, indeed, a full API life cycle management, multiple runtimes to develop your endpoints and connect to internal banking systems, all that sitting on a multi cloud container management platform. So, what is new? The new is we have packaged the open bank sandbox with automated provisioning and make it publicly available as open source solution. So let's talk about a little about the uh, full life cycle, uh, full API management life cycle that, uh, that's covered by the, by the Red Hat uh, open banking sandbox. So, the basis of an uh, effective uh, API strategy uh, is, 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 the, is the basis of the effective uh, API strategy. So the API lifecycle management is a term that's illustrating the need to manage all the steps 
in the life of API from cre creation with two requirements. So Red Hat advocates for the API first approach. This is involves consulting with the stakeholders to collaborative design and the API before determining and developing the various channels that the application that we use this API. One of the benefits of this approach is that organizations get valuable feedback in the early stage of the design, which helps developing a service that delivers value to an API eventual consumers. So at the stage of uh, API lifecycle are planning and designing the API, uh, which involves mapping out various research operations along the business case scenarios before the API is fully implemented. These include mocking. Uh, testing the API uh, deserves the same first class treatment uh, that you would give you to any application. So once you made your API available, you take on our responsibility to ensure not all, no, nothing affects the API quality and, and, and performance. Uh, implementing the API uh, focus on, 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 on the plan and the design, uh, deploying the API to an environment that facilitates the easy discovery and consumption uh, is essential. So for the success of, of, of this API strategy, uh, API control, consumption, uh, when managing the API to protect the quality of the services, the rate limits and SLAs, uh, so APIs are door to the world to so establish and enforcing enterprise policies uh, for security and firewalling. These APIs is extremely important. And APIs from the API catalog is published into API developer portal to be easily consumed by developers. So the API portal is aiming to be available in self-serve mode and developers should be able to connect 24 seven and experience smooth navigation uh, with documentation, Q and A and support with it if uh, help is needed. And at the end, uh, one of the, most of the time APIs are offered for free because they represent a new way of making business. But in most, in some cases, uh, companies might want to monetize their APIs because their underlying data is part of their business. And that's why the companies will track the utilization and apply the plan policy to, to generate some uh, the API revenue. So, and this is the Red Hat technology stack that provides the full API lifecycle management. So I just keep it here for, for, for your reference. Okay. Uh, we'll see in, in, in the demo that uh, one of the key aspects of the open banking sandbox is the automation provided by Ansible that we can uh, not only provision on, into our internal product demo system, but also allow us to deploy the same sandbox into any public cloud provider or OpenShift instance available. Um, another component is MicroRox for mocking and testing. The APIs, uh, API first uh, approach. Uh, Quarkus is cloud native, and we'll get into this. So, container simplified application and API deployment and portability across platform. So, uh, this eliminates the need to refactor services to launch them in, in, on different infrastructures and make your environment uh, more efficient. Uh, in this open banking platform, Red Hat OpenShift serves as the underlying container platform, application platform, and and three scale API management with fused and single sign on Red Hat OpenShift application runtimes and all running containers within the OpenShift container platform. So this is a, a, a greatest new this week. Uh, Red Hat Open Banking solution has been featured industry recognition and have been nominated for award that will uh, be decided by November. So we are finalists in this uh, 
award and we are in good company. So we are the feature because of the full API lifecycle and application services available, being enabled, enabling the cloud native architecture and providing a truly open hybrid cloud platform. So let's take into a cloud native approach. Basically it's for roughly 50 years, mankind wrote applications in some variant of monolithic architecture, including me and probably many of you, whether it was a client server, a mainframe, a three-tier uh, pipeline processing, or something else, we had services that did different jobs, but were similar to each other in terms of environment and language. They often shared a common business tier and common data format. Uh, and in the, the last 10 years, we have moved it to a new model with the cloud native microservices. In this world, services are developed by smaller circuit teams with minimal dependencies between the teams. Uh, the proverbial uh, two pizza teams. Uh, so this approach emphasizes frameworks, sprints, hard cloud deployment, uh, continuous integration, and many other innovations that weren't relevant or available to monolithic developers. So moving on, uh, new development practices required new mental models. So in our mental model at Red Hat, we, we address microservice architecture from four aspects. Uh, APIs, it's clear that, uh, APIs that are clear and well-defined. So API contracts are the best approach for synchronous application level interaction between services and, and with the outside world. Uh, events, so immutable states and value of a particular ent business entity or business domain, which occur, occur, can occur during operations among these services. So you can refer to CQRS, Command Query Responsibility Segregation, and data as each microservice owns its own data model. There has no, has to be a, a strategy for visualizing that data and providing gateways to this data in a manner that allows carry an update from the other services and from the outside world. And enterprise integration patterns for the business logic often uh, living on, on the legacy banking systems and existing systems. So we require often bootstrap processing with routing and transforming across services. And this is where the enterprise integration patterns comes in. So looking into the journey of how applications have been designed and deployed can help us understand why serverless has become a topic of such discussion. We'll get into the definition uh, later in this presentation. So I move to, in, in the move to the cloud native and the objective of being portable drives decisions. The smaller the code base, the more portable and scalable each process can become, the drive the, can, can become. So it drives uh, towards function as a services be the smallest and light, lightest amount of code to ship. So this is in general, this is the landscape we found in many open banking implementations around the globe, uh, where we have seen most of the open banking implementations sits on the left model, uh, where legacy-based APIs are connecting by some mechanism or abstraction layer directly into legacy system in an existing system in, in non containerized uh, applications. Uh, there, is, there are many drawbacks into this approach. Uh, one of them is not managing security and governance through the whole life cycle of the API calls and interactions. Uh, also, uh, you can evolve for internal, driving internal consumption. So you have internal APIs that are integrated with uh, the API management external access uh, for consumption. And, and we start to, to also to move into the containerized application platform, 
where we, we start to see cloud native microservices. So into this cloud native microservices, there are many principles we're going into, but one of the common parts is to uh, consider all your microservices, cloud native microservices, into a service mesh we can manage and, and handle. So before going before going to the cloud native, uh, uh, actually, cloud native or modern applications share some basic principles. They, they are distributed in nature, ideally designed to run anywhere and ready to scale on demand. The scales for these applications happen based on events, HTTP requests or more complex uh, event systems like Kafka or third-party systems. Uh, everything has an API and, and is connected to the world. So your applications will be eventually be exposed as an API or have to talk to another system using API. With most cloud native applications, you will end up calling services within uh, their, their, their APIs and build their services of your own. Uh, modern applications are designed to be disposable. They can start and stop due to failures or not gracefully and without impacting the whole system. These characters help you to build more robust systems handling unexpected uh, circumstances or, 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 or events. Today, most of the companies are polyglot and a platform that support developer workflow for multiple pro programming languages without no flicks. So no special treatment for a given language or framework consistency is key to, to, to the scalability. Security is, is also a common cross-cutting concern, but given the scale, most systems run today, we, uh, run today and with automation in place, it's a paramount requirement and, and must be out of box uh, secured by design. This is uh, a tip for reference to the cloud native definition from CMCF. Um, you can get into later, I'm not getting to, to read more on it. And then we talk about Quarkus and why this is important. So Quark is a tiny particle that makes up protons, neutrons. And Quarkus is a Kubernetes native Java framework tailored for Graal VM and Hotspot, and crafted from best of breed Java libraries and standards. So the goal of Quarkus is to make Java the leading runtime Kubernetes and serverless environment while offering developers uh, unifi uh, unified reactive and imperative programming model to optimi optimally uh, address a wide range of distributed application architectures. So this is how you usually see the evolution and the growth of application architecture choices from the monolith to cloud IT, microservices, serverless, even driven, not to mention other uh, common terminology. And the Quarkus nat native binaries are extremely resource efficient. So starting up fast and taking very little little memory and this makes it very well suited for uh, to, to many uses where traditional java applications have have struggled so, such as serverless and or event driven uh, architectures and applications where process isolation and density are super important like scalable microservice architectures so quarkus precompiles and packages our application as a native binary, uh, if it's, uh, you can package it as binary, as a binary native in the binary or, or run into, into uh, traditional JVM. So it makes it ready to, to assemble into a container image that's immutable for how the CICD pipeline and multiple environment, or you can run it like any, any common. Java is beta version of its Quarkus runtime for deploying Java application uh, on Kubernetes that doesn't require Java virtual machines. And 
Quarkus uh, startups extremely fast, thanks for the pre-work done during the compilation. So eliminating the, code, the, the dead code and resulting in a very small footprint. So this is usually the process, the Quarkus native compilation. Uh, uh, Quarkus takes to uh, use uh, Graal VM and or the Mandrill subset of the Graal VM that Red Hat is de delivering now and they compile the, into uh, native executable images or, or runtime. We'll see this uh, on during the demo. So let's go into the demo. What do you see there? So first, I want to, to just give you a quick uh, overview of the demo. So uh, this Open Banking Sandbox is deployed on, on top of the API. So we will, we will navigate through the developer portal and, and take a look what are the APIs provided for developers. So I'm logging in as a consumer and then I'll be able to, uh, as, a, as a simulating a developer application, place a request for this endpoint through the API gateway and, and have some authorization API request to backend because uh, it is all integrated, integrated and using some security mechanism. Uh, for the, the purpose of this demo, I'm not in doing a full lifecycle of security for the sake of, of simplicity. Uh, then it goes into the backend, which is actually one of the backends for the endpoint is a mock API, mock API that provides a branch service locator. And then we will go into developing uh, a new or deploying a new API uh, microservices uh, into the OpenShift platform and then connect it to, 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 to the Twiscale right? So uh, we navigate through the admin portal and see how it, everything works. Uh, so this is the, the, the modernization view of the uh, old Java application for those that uh, like me uh, have been working with Java for too many times, uh, going from an old architecture into a Microsoft architecture of the same uh, application design. Okay. So let's move into the demo. I'll switch on my screen. So first step, uh, this is uh, the, the API sandbox uh, land, land, landing page. Uh, I have a rather register a user, so I, it's uh, running on my local environment, and I can just get it logging into this this environment uh, as a user. And as a user, I expect to when I log in in developer portal is to get access into the catalog of the prepackaged APIs for the sandbox, or we can make it available more APIs available to this, to this catalog. So uh, it's not feature extensive, but it includes uh, some uh, prepackaged uh, APIs from uh, Open Banking, uh, UK Open Banking API definition. Explore the branch locator services. I can see here available the user key that, that uh, for my user I'm logged in and we can navigate through the API documentation and we can try it out from directly from the browser. Okay, uh, I need to insert here the user key and place execute. And actually it will place a request to the backend uh, which is actually running on on my backend. This is the API endpoint, and I can also use the command line to place the same request and see the output. So let's go into to this. So this is uh, my development environment. This is my development environment, and I'm getting into. Uh, I get to run the 
same command to get the API. So you can see here the output of the API is the same. I get into the browser. Uh, I'm getting the branch response. And luckily, the first branch is based in London. Uh, so, so yeah, just featuring this, this uh, usability. Uh, now I'll get into the tree scale admin console and take a quick look uh, on how it works and how we can get access to the available API. So first you can see all the available APIs and, and that, that are available on, on and, and deployed into this, this environment. Uh, we have shown you the branch locator APIs and and we can have a quick look into the analytics, uh, see uh, it is getting getting more reads uh, over time uh, as, as we are using and, and making more calls to this. And looking to the developer portal, I want to quickly show you the developer portal that you can actually uh, manage to to place your template and template them and, and, and display your your developer portal or providing a new design user look and feel. So this is the template for the catalog page. Actually there are there are some uh, implementation mechanisms for uh, scripting through this template, HTML templates and, and files. Uh, so it's a feature CMS tool available together with uh, Swiftscale admin console and other feature is the, act the active docs, uh, which are actually the API specifications that are loaded into Swiftscale to provide developer documentation uh, for the API. So we can take a quick look into the branch locator. It's the same documentation available and use it on developer portal that are, are, are retrieved from, from here. So uh, taking a quick look into the API endpoint, there is a concept of, of product API and backend. So I can connect a created and we are all moving into the API world, into uh, team developers are creating and companies are creating products, not actually um, APIs. And we use this terminology to package and connect the product with multiple endpoints and make some make it more flexible to 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 connect and and use the policies. So actually. We can see here uh, the, it's pointing out to a local micro rocks endpoint. And now I want to show you the micro rocks working Yeah, so I'm getting to micro rocks the community. Uh, community project that we I have deployed together with the Open Bank Sandbox. And what you can see is that uh, we can also have some metrics on, 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 on MicroRock. And you take a look that I have loaded most, all the services, uh, API endpoints and mock data into MicroRock. And it can make it easier for you to test and develop multiple scenarios and doing some logic and templating over API requests to respond into a properly way. So this is the quickest and fastest way possible for starting our API lifecycle. So back here to, uh, to, this is the OpenShift interface. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm running a local, local environment. And I want to quickly show you that we have implemented the API all these APIs and their open bank sandbox in an automated fashion. And we are using Ansible playbook for doing the, the, the automation of provisioning. It takes, uh, takes up, um, about uh, 10 or, or, or 20 minutes to provision 
uh, the Open Bank Sandbox on top of OpenShift. It includes downloading uh, multiple images from Red Hat repositories. Uh, so you can see here, it's an example I have run, yes, run yesterday. It took about 11 minutes to deploy the Open Bank Sandbox into my local uh, OpenShift uh, platform. So back to OpenShift, what I want to show is that uh, the way we use to deploy and create the APIs into the platform uh, is also automated. So we don't need to go and manage it and do multiple clicks, but going to the, the, the Red Hat operators for Triscale, we can see the instance of the local Triscale, but also the product and backends API deployed over. So actually, this is uh, there are multiple examples that are available on our search repository that we are loaded from the automation playbook into uh, Freescale. So let's take an example of branch locators. This the this is the resource definition for the branch locator. Uh, you can take a look into this uh, later uh, for the available resources. Uh, I want to show you also about the developer perspective for a banking app. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have created a modern version of, of a banking app sample application. And this, include, this is including uh, two to microservices I have deployed it. What I actually have deployed the, the transaction microservices. Uh, it's already running and available. So I can quickly show you, this is the transaction history for multiple accounts available at the bank. And what we can do is that uh, is fetch the data from this API, but also, uh, look at the endpoint uh, that's available and actually pick one particular account and see the, the, the results here. And inside this account, we ha also have the possibility to retrieve a statement for a such period of time and this will bring only the transactions for this particular month. So we are getting into October statement data from, from, from the, this customer, okay. Let's go back to, so uh, this microservice is implemented, is implemented with, uh, with Parkus. Uh, so I want to quickly show you another Quarkos uh, implementation. So this is uh, the entity domain domain entity for the, the customer uh, microservices. So uh, making it uh, a, the object modeling and, 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 and integration with the, uh, the, the data, database through Hibernate is just a matter of putting the annotations and uh, and, and making the public uh, variables uh, on, on, the, on the, the class definition. And all also uh, creating the services is, is using the Java RASTI uh, annotations to, 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 and using other component library in the libraries to list out what are, are the methods used and how it's mapped into actual uh, endpoint definition. So I want to show you very quickly. I will switch it to each to, it to uh, Microsoft Defense endpoint instead of of customers. And what you can do is really uh, compile Quarkus staff and run it to each in our local environment.
a wrong directory. So here we go. Uh, so we are starting Maven, some Maven compilation, and we're going to start off the Java, the microservice application for the customer. And I will log, get logged in into, into the services as well. So this is the actual endpoint. So the, the banking uh, customer management uh, microservice is, is not li listing now because it's, we're using uh, the wrong endpoint uh, definition and, and, and URL. So uh, what I sh want to show you is that, is that uh, we're gonna, we can move into and make it uh, change in the code and it get quickly into the API, this, into the, the, the runtime for development. And for the development purpose, it's really uh, pro productive and effective because you're, you, you do not need to, to spend too much time into compiling, packaging, and deploying your application or the test. So this is one of the benefits that we can highlight, but also uh, you can, you, you, you can, we will see that uh, we can also run the same application as uh, native. So you can see I have recompiled the customer application microservices into a native, native runtime. Uh, it's actually taking the runtime uh, is packaged into six, eight megabytes and I'll take it uh, run customer run it. If you will connect to the database, start the application, and I will have the same functionality running. So this is the same application running on my local environment. Uh, and what I want to do is to show you it's consuming very little. Uh, memory and research, so a second. So you see the, the, the resident uh, memory consume is about 60 megabytes uh, on my local environment. So I can just stop my environment. Now I'm gonna deploy this application. into OpenShift. So back to the OpenShift, we see here is the only the Postgre database already deployed for this uh, customer customer management microservices. And what it can do next is to actually to to go into the to the customer and tell it to create a build on OpenShift. So it's going to start a build for a customer and this build is going to fail because I have not uploaded the first for the build, which is the next step. So this first build is going to fail. I will start a new one using the current directory to upload the, 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 the binaries to OpenShift and OpenShift is gonna start deploying it into and pro and create a, uh, a image resource. So this is our these all commands are will be available uh, is available on the uh, the code repository and resource available uh, for for later. Uh, so I'm running all this data and 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 what I can show you is this. Uh, of state operators uh, in, in the banking space in, in the sandbox environment and mic in micro rocks uh, it is using all 
also using keycloak as as a, as a runtime for for authentication and security. So back to the build banking app. Okay, the build. Uh, yeah, completed the, the uploading the directory. So. Uh, Once we have this building uh, finished, we'll be able to, so it's doing their job, uh, creating the, the container image, loading the image into the, the images right inside OpenShift, and then we'll, it will, uh, once the image is available, uh, you can, we can see the image. Yeah, it's pushed it into, so we can see into the image stream into this banking project. The customer uh, and, and it's available. So I can do now is to start a new app and then expose their that for external access and also I label this as a customer. So it's now all deployed on OpenShift and you can see now if the customer is application running on OpenShift as well. So this is uh, the, the the idea of the life cycle. Uh, so I have shown you the APIs available, the developer portal, uh, active docs, the branch API definition, and the analytics. And one step further is to show you how to uh, deploy a new API backend. So, uh, is considering that uh, we want to make available a, a statement, account statement API uh, that we have created uh, for the transaction microservices, I can get into the sandbox environment and using the three scale operator, I will load into the backend a new API definition from code and it will get into uh, so let me get into the three scale dashboard so to show you that not all apis uh, these are all the apis available for now and we will deploy a new one so actually the code uh, for the back end is here There is a small change I need to do to replace this. Done. So th this is what we're going to do. Create the backend API so it's getting synced all done so we have a backend statement and now we're going to provide the product for api for this definition of backend and you see that backend is point, pointing out to the banking transactions endpoint we have uh, deployed and now the product api definition from a yaml definition put it here and it's working, uh, the initial state is complete. When we go into, we can see it's a red thinker. Uh, going back to three scale, now we can see this account statement is just provision. So this is uh, this uh, interesting feature uh, of three scale, making our automation of pipelines and deployments move across multiple environments uh, much more easier uh, using this capability. So, Let's back to wrap up uh, what we have seen so far. Good. So this is the, the application architecture we have seen. For now, uh, 
very quickly, there, these are the benefits of Quarkus. You get a more details from this presentation slide deck. Uh, the benefits for developers and the benefits for uh, the way developers work. So we can take the imperative or reactive approach. Uh, so to wrap up, architectural evolution is a necessity. Uh, serverless definitions is the way to, to, to the place we are going to. It's a computing executing model that depends on services to manage service side logic and state where business logic to run in the stateless and even triggered compute Linux containers. So this is uh, the approach. And the cloud native approach in action is uh, about APIs, enterprise integration patterns, data, and events. So we can have a, a multiple scenarios and use case for data as API using service registry for decoupling uh, the consumer and producer, uh, local data UX, changes data capture policy, uh, creation and extension, and serverless integration, all that which is provided out of box from the Red Hat integration platform on top of OpenShift. And building your application environment with Red Hat means that you can take all these technologies uh, available from the enterprise Kubernetes Ray uh, platform with developers tools and integration and runtime available for, for your use. So for final considerations, these are the resources available uh, uh, from, from the Open Bank Sandbox. You can call it your, yours, get up with Open Bank Sandbox environment as you want. I will recommend you to go to the interactive learning portal at openshift.com. Try it. Uh, there are multiple scenarios and ways. Uh, much simpler, you can try starting using OpenShift from your web browser without requiring provisioning into a public cloud or your local machine. Uh, you can also try to deploy the banking app demo application that I have just shown you and it will be available on this GitHub repository uh, you can launch into the, the interactive portal as well. Uh, the Open Bank Sandbox Collaboration work, Workspace is available on this on the GitHub Open Accelerators. Uh, you can this is the the, the 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 space where we are working as a community or collaboration. So you can open tickets and make your questions over there if you need help. And find out more at Red Hat Financial Services landing page. So. Uh, Thank you so much for, for, for your attention. Uh, if, you, if you need more, uh, you can reach me out on social media or, or reach out to Red Hat representatives. So thank you. Yeah, this is one of the, the last the last input. This, if you have any questions, go to our booth. Uh, we have Red Hat specially running over there. I'm jumping now into the Red Hat booth at the API Days uh, conference, virtual conference website uh, and enjoyed it. Thank you.